Coming up, I'm gonna show you a scanner app that just launched in 2020 that is making over $300,000 a year. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve Pyong, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to helping you grow your app downloads and more importantly, your revenues. And in this video, I really want to show off other apps that are doing phenomenally well to one, hopefully motivate you. And two, the opportunity in the app space is still there. And lastly, to show you how we like to do market research. Now you, if you're a developer, can do market research yourself. All right, shall we get to it? First thing first, you want to go under app banning. And so I'm under the top charts category right here. I filtered it by the US. And then I also wanted to just look at the business category. And so I thought, hey, let's just sort of go into applications, and just business, right? And this is the day. And so we're just gonna, you can pick any day, it doesn't really matter. But today, you know, here's some apps. And what I noticed, if you put scanner, immediately, like the number two app in top grossing, that's making the most money under the business category is a scanner app. I was like, whoa, that's insane. And so you can see there's like 31 different search results. Now, granted, they might be using scanner everywhere. And so there might not be 30 apps, but let's just say roughly 30 different apps out there within the top 100. So there's about roughly 30 scanner apps that make up the top 100 top grossing business apps. So one, you can think of it as a category that you might wanna create a scanner app, or two, you might be thinking, maybe that's a little bit too crowded, but that's up for you to decide. What I'm showing you is, there is a market for scanner apps, like a huge market. And I do know whenever I create these type of videos, you want me to find apps that have just launched. So I'm gonna show you this app right here. Let me see it again. This scanner right here. So number 31 is the app that I found that just reached recently launched in 2020. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the revenues of that scanner app right here. So here's the app. According to Sensor Tower, which is pretty accurate, gives you a little rough ballpark. It's not 100% accurate, but it gives you a ballpark. They're advertising on YouTube and many more channels as well. So YouTube is just one of them, but it's six more networks. Gives you an indication of how they might be driving their downloads. And then recently launched in February of 2020. Okay, There are other apps that are making more money, like this one, the scanner app. This is the number one app. It's making $3 million off of 700,000 downloads. This one, let's go back real quick, 100,000 downloads. This is another number two app. It's making about 1 million downloads. So as you can see, they're advertising on Facebook. Looks like this is Japanese, I believe. I can't be too sure about that. But they launched in 2015. The number one app launched in 2015 as well. And then this other app, which was pretty high up there, launch in 2017. And so the app that I wanted to pick for you guys was recently launched. So just about a year ago as of this recording. So the other thing I wanna do is you definitely wanna look at Sensor Tower when you're doing market research. Let's say I wanted to think about maybe potentially creating a scanner app, right? This app just launched and so they're advertising a lot. I'm gonna go back to App Annie. So if I were to click on this app, I just go right here. And then I'm gonna go into the keyword field, ASO keywords. So I wanna just look at the top ranks. So unlike other ASO tools, App Annie will give you the keywords that an app, any particular app, ranks really well for. So other ASO tools, you likely have to put in the actual keywords to see how well they rank. But this one, you can just sort of, App Annie will just tell you those keywords. And so as you can see, they don't rank really well for a lot of the main keywords. So scanner app, number eight, usually the bulk of the downloads go to the top three position. So number eight isn't as great, but for a keyword that has a lot of traffic, top 10 is decent, but you definitely wanna be in the top three. So what I'm seeing is that they're not actually driving a lot of downloads organically. That's just my assumption because the keywords they're ranking for aren't that high, right? Scanner app being the number one keyword. So we can even say, take a look at their, here, let's take a look at their app store presence real quick, just to get an idea of what their title and subtitles say. So scanner app, number one, scan docs. So let's put that in there, see how well they rank for that, just to get a sense of how they're marketing this app, how they're making this 300,000. Right, so I'm gonna do this. PDF. Let's see, let's throw these in here. And let's see what App Annie says is their ranking. Ruler, they're 12. They have in their subtitle, so it's like, okay. 
I think they're doing the best they can from an ASO perspective. They've optimized it pretty well. But again, okay, App Annie is showing no rank right now for that. So let's look at the PDF keyword, PDF, PDF scanner 21. So again, they're really driving the bulk of their downloads through these ad channels. So they're probably spending a good amount of money on their advertising, which can only mean that they're doing phenomenally well from a conversion perspective. So let's take a look at the app. All right, we got the app. We're gonna hit allow. Cool. I used to think that we shouldn't hit allow, but, or do that default pop-up, but I've heard from somebody in the audience who said that, hey, it does work better than like a double opt-in. Would you like to let, you know, put send push notifications? And then he said, yes. When you hit yes, then they show the pop-up versus just showing the pop-up. He, he found that more people opted in when you just show the default pop-up. So now I've changed my stance. Default notification pop-up is the way to go. All right, I like this. What this onboarding intro screen does is show you exactly what the app is all about, scanner app, and then loved by 1 million users. I love that. Social proof tells you exactly what the app does along with social proof. When I continue, I like how they're now starting to talk about their premium features. Enjoy your premium features. Tells you quick things about it. And then it says it has a new ruler in there. And then boom, it's asking for you for money. Now, look at this. It's a three-day free trial with a weekly. With business apps, I found, and entertainment apps, weekly pricing does actually work. So this is very interesting. Also, take notice of this. I have to hit continue. There's no X button, right? There's no way for me to skip out of this. So they're being very, very aggressive. I am shocked that Apple actually lets them do this, okay? So once I hit continue, watch this, and then I hit cancel, you'll notice that this little X closeout button shows up. So it's interesting how they got it through Apple this way. The other thing I really like and that I do promote most developers to do is have this little section where you see no ads, unlimited documents, get premium. Very good. This is the home screen that most of your users are gonna see. And so it's important that you have your get premium or upgrade button somewhere in this homepage. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that I can't scan docs without paying. So a lot of these features core features to a scanner app are actually locked by this particular app. So the only two things I can do are import files. So I can go in the files here, or I can import photos. So I can go into my photos section here, right? Those are the two things. If I wanted to scan something, I can't do it. So theoretically, I guess I could take a photo of the thing that I wanted to scan and then import those photos. I don't know if they have a, let's see, limit. Got a bunch of screenshots that I'm working on. I wonder if they have a limit. So that'll be good to know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not gonna go that too in depth. Let me import some other photos. You can see I'm doing a lot. All right, no tag, no tag, save. Let me add some files. I have some pictures. Uh, oh, this is a good one. It's my son's. Okay, so they're definitely letting us import a lot of different stuff. Super simple. I might want to test a longer pricing page on this versus this scrolling thing don't like this scrolling thing but i think that it's working well for them obviously so who am i to say that's it guys super simple scanner app but shocking to me the most surprising thing to me is they're locking a lot of their core features of a scanner app and forcing their users to pay so a balance to you guys on whether you want to be that aggressive or not as aggressive i do like the fact that they are locking some of these features because one of the things I find developers do is they give away too many features, which doesn't really motivate the end user to want to pay you. So if they really need it, for example, a scanner app, 
probably need a scanner app. You're like, shoot, I need a scanner app, right? <laughs> need it right now. You're probably more willing to pay. I'm curious to see how well their retention is, how many people stay on to the weekly, how long they end up staying on. So a few tests that I would wanna do. And if I were creating a scanner app, I would do market research on some of these apps and even find, let me go back to the screen, but even find the scanner app that is further down and see how well they're doing from their monetization perspective. So let's see, Scanner Pro, Riedel, this one. We can take a look on Sensor Tower to see how well they're doing. Yeah, right here. Riedel's a pretty decent sized company, 70,000. So I wanna see, maybe download that app, go down further down the top charts and see how that particular app is monetizing and what they're doing and get a sense of that. And that's how I would start doing market research and then eventually coming up with a marketing plan. And you could even click on Riedel to see if they rank well for certain keywords. So I can go quick, really, really quick here. On the keyword side of things, copy, scanner pro. So decent, they're ranking well. So maybe they're getting some downloads through just organic and doesn't look like Sensor Tower is reporting that they're doing any type of paid marketing. So, so Riedel seems to be more dependent on organic downloads. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and what types of apps you want me to take a look at. So sort of highlight some of the marketing and the market research. And finally, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We're trying to grow our YouTube channel. So new content every Tuesday, and then we go live every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, and I believe 5 p.m. in the UK. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you on the next video.